Hi subscribers, it's Vivs here from SlideNerd. In this video, I will show you the simplest example of shared element transitions. If you go to our app that we have been building so far, if you go to the settings part of it, sorry, the menu part of it, you go to shared elements transition. Here is our activity shared A, which has four buttons along the four corners of a screen. Right now, if you click one of the buttons, you're going to start activity B. Let's take a look at that. Now this is activity B where the single button is at the center on the screen. But it appears as if the user has seamlessly or smoothly moved from A to B. If you go back, you will see activity A once again with the other buttons coming into the place. It appears as if the button is common between activity A and activity B. But that's not the case. We are going to take a look at how we can make these kind of transitions in this video which are called shared element transitions. If you go to my channel on SlideNerd and go to playlist, we are currently stuck in material design where we were talking about content transitions in the last video. Now let's take a look at how we can share things. Also, at the end of this video, I have a surprise for you. So let's get back to code and figure out how we can work things out. If you talk about shared element transitions, the best post is once again by Alex Lockwood. Be sure to read this article which has all the details that you're looking for. What are the methods out there? What are the different processes and steps executed when you actually do a shared element transition? What are the different types of transitions out there? He has explained it so well that if I try to do that in my video, I will be simply repeating what he has said. So let's go back and directly run our example. So here there's activity A and there's activity shared underscore B. Now notice that the layouts are separate the objects are also separate. The way you try to give an illusion to the user is by using an attribute called transition name. In other words, from activity A and activity B, if you go to take a look at the layout and the text part here, you will notice that I have this attribute called transition name equals to selected button. Now if I have the same attribute set on some view in activity A, then those two views are going to be considered to be shareable. In other words, they are going to be animated in such a way that the user gets the illusion that they are one and the same. And that's the whole idea of doing shared element transitions. So going to shared activity shared underscore A, I have to first check whether the build version is greater than equals to 21 or not. Now I have already created a transition the same way I did in my previous video. If you go here to my transitions folder in RES, there is a folder called transition where I have my shared element transition underscore A. You will notice that it is the same thing which I did in the previous video. There's a transition set. I have said that the duration which should be 5000 milliseconds and I have used the change bounds transition over here. Now for shared element transition there are specific ones like change bounds. Then there is change image transform. Alex Lockwood in his post he has explained it very nicely about what these transitions do. So be sure to read that post. So coming back to activity shared underscore A, what I'm simply going to do is get a reference to the button and when I, when I click the button, there's going to be an on click that is triggered. Right now, I have a simple intent over here which is going to construct and directly start our activity B. Right now, there are no transitions added. If I click on one of the buttons, this is what happens. Activity B pops up without any shared element transition. You click back and you're back to activity A. But we are going to do the same thing which we did in the previous video. We are going to construct an activity com options compat object first. Where we are going to say activity options compat. We are going to call the method make scene transition animation here. We are going to pass a reference to our current activity which would be this. Then we are going to pass the name of the shared element. Now remember this is needed to get the properties from activity A. That is where is the button placed. What are its coordinates? What is its width? And so on. Now, in our case, we have four buttons. Whichever button gets clicked, that button should be our shared element. The way we do that is simply pass view here. And the third parameter is, oops, it's V here. And the third parameter is the name of the shared element. Now, like I said, from between activity B's layout, and activity A's layout, if you want to perform a shared element transition, you need to have the same Android transition name attribute value for two views out there. In our case, what we are going to do is take our view, this is V, which can be any button that is clicked. We are going to set a transition on name on it, and that would be called 
selected button out there now notice that it is selected button here and it is selected button here as well so now i'm going to simply say v dot get transition name in other words whatever button was clicked i have set a transition name to it and then i am simply passing the transition name to the options compat now in the intent where i've said new intent i don't have to change anything here but in the start activity i can go here and supply the second parameter as the options that we need which will be, which will be called options compat dot to bundle that's all you need to do in other words take the shell element set it a transition name on it you can do this in xml or java now remember i have used code here you can also go here to chat a and you can set transition name attribute on each of these buttons if you want but i prefer doing it this way so going up we need to do some more things that is before the set content view method we need to actually specify what will happen when our activity a exits the way we do that is we say get window dot set shared element and notice that shared element enter transition exit transition re-enter return this is the same style which we had in the previous video where we talked about content transitions here we are going to specify the exit transition for our activity underscore a with shared elements and that would be from this file which is transition which is shared element underscore transition underscore a the way we do that is we get a reference to a transition inflator by saying dot from we pass this to get the context and from there we can directly say inflate transition and pass r dot transition dot shared element transition underscore a now the duration is 5000 which means the exit transition will run for 5000 milliseconds and it would actually run change bounce transition which would track the changes in the position and size and other aspects of our button or shared element whatever it is so going to activity shared b we just need to do the same thing or similar series of steps here inside the on create we first need to check whether the version is lollipop or not or it's greater than lollipop here the same thing we do we say get window.set this time we specify the enter transition for activity underscore b we simply say shared, shared element enter transition and we do the same thing we say transition inflator dot from this dot inflate transition r dot transition dot shared element underscore a so in activity a we have specified how it should exit with this line in activity b we have specified how it should enter with that line and in activity a we told who should be shared and which button should be shared since we have four of those buttons out here at the top at this point everything is perfectly set now when you run the app you should be able to see this happen in slow motion so there you go there's our shared element running and click on one of the buttons that's exactly what happens the properties of that button are captured by the change bounce transform and they are given there in activity b where things are going to be animated with the help of the animator that is generated based on the difference between the start and the end values that have been captured now the whole process of how this is drawn on top of the view overlay is explained by alex lockwood if you have read the post so be sure to read it this is the simplest and also the stupidest shared element transition that can be performed just to get an idea of how everything works what kind of transitions did you manage to make how creative are you be sure to share your code in the comments and let me know what kind of transitions you have come up with now for the surprise news we are working very hard to come up with ios and swift and as you know very well we already have a lot of articles coming up on ios and swift and we have reached functions out there in terms of swift the reason we are focusing on the articles first is most of the videos in swift are going to be made on playground where you're going to erase retype erase retype code so we don't want you to miss the code that we have typed out there and that's why the articles are coming out first the next part of the news is about slide nerd on udemy a week ago i had the meeting with officials at udemy who invited me to come and make videos on their site and i have already started a playlist here which is called master android zero to hero now this playlist is going to contain every single youtube video that slider has ever made into one massive list it's going to be like 200 or 300 videos big and it's going to be the biggest course out there on android on udemy other than this there's also a material design series which is the same thing that's currently running which is also going to be present on udemy now if you ask me why you should jump to udemy from youtube here's the reason on udemy i plan to keep everything in one place highly organized which is not the case on youtube you have to run the playlist you have to jump to videos 
and I don't want you guys doing that here on YouTube. So be sure to subscribe to us on Udemy as well and follow us up. And as always, the code for this is available on GitHub slash SlideNerd under this material test repository, which is currently getting updated. So if you like what you saw, please like this video, share this video, subscribe to SlideNerd and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.